Hello, my name is Furkan Yeşiler and I'm a PhD student at Music Technology Group as a part of the MIP Frontiers project. And now I will explain our research paper, Accurate and Scalable Version Identification Using Musically Motivated Embeddings. First of all, what is music version identification? We can define this task as automatically identifying different versions that originate from a certain musical work. Another widely used term for versions is cover songs. It is a common practice to change some of the musical characteristics of a song while creating a new version. For example, artists may modify the root notes, the structure, the tempo of a song while performing their own versions. And handling these changes is one of the big challenges of this task. Another big challenge is to build systems that can scale up to industrial size databases. And applications for such systems include digital rights management, for example, for detecting copyright infringement cases, and uh, organizing and navigating through large collections of music. We can see this task as a typical example of a music retrieval scenario, where given a query, we want to retrieve the most similar items from our database. The traditional approaches focus on uh, the feature extraction and post-processing steps to obtain representations that are invariant to these changes in musical characteristics. And the best performing ones use local alignment methods to estimate pairwise similarities between songs. The biggest setback of these approaches is that the amount of computation time needed increases quadratically with the size of the features and the size of the database. On the other hand, a more current deep learning approaches focus on encoding these songs into meaningful embedding vectors so that they can take advantage of the fast k-nearest neighbor algorithms in the retrieval phase. As a result, the traditional approaches suffer from the accuracy scalability trade-off. The best performing ones are usually the slowest ones. On the other hand, the deep learning approaches offer uh, competitive performances and they require less computation time. Our method, MOVE, which stands for Musically Motivated Version Embeddings, achieves state-of-the-art performance and offers scalability. And now I will explain our network architecture and design decisions. First of all, the input data. Instead of using spectrograms or raw audio, we use a chroma feature variant, which we call Crema Pitch Class Profile. This representation has a size of 12 on the frequency dimension, and on the time dimension, we use 1800 non overlapping frames, which correspond to a little less than 3 minutes. And before feeding this input to our network, we uh, perform a simple pre processing step following the idea of Chu et al. Uh, we, for each song, we duplicate these representations and concatenate them along the frequency axis. And then we remove the last row to obtain an extended representation. And why do we do this? Because this extended representation contains all the possible pitch transpositions for a given song. And we take advantage of this with a convolutional layer that goes through all these possible pitch transpositions and a max pooling layer that chooses the most informative one. After the transposition invariance module, each output has information about nearly 17 seconds of audio, and we want to extend this duration. We do this by using four convolutional layers with parametric ReLU activation functions. Two of these convolutional layers have rather small kernel sizes to achieve higher level nonlinearities in a short temporal context. The other two, still having small kernel sizes, they have dilations of 20 and 13 to expand receptive fields. And after these convolutional layers, for each song, our representation has 512 channels and T prime overlapping 30 second time frames. The next step is to summarize the information in the temporal dimension. Our goal is to obtain C number of features per song, regardless of the song duration. And why do we want this? First of all, 
we do not know which part of the song is more important for us to understand that it is a version of another song. For example, an artist may put a two-minute intro in the beginning, which doesn't exist in the original song, and if we would process the first two minutes of each song, then we would miss any relevant information in that particular case. Another reason is that tempo modifications are fairly common while creating new versions, and we want to obtain similar features uh, for songs that are similar but played in different tempos and uh, that have different durations. And how can we do this? First idea is to use channel-wise average pulling meaning taking the average value of each row. This technique would consider all the time steps as equally important, because all the time steps would contribute equally to the summary that we obtain. Intuitively, for example in pop or rock songs, we know that chorus or verse may contain more information, more useful information for us, compared to the intro or the outro. So then this technique may not be the most reliable one. Another idea is to use channel-wise max pooling, meaning taking the highest value of each row. Although this technique would work better than the average pooling uh, technique, uh, we would consider only the most informative time step. And in some cases, we may need to consider several parts of the song while creating our summary. And in such cases, this technique would fail as well. Our goal is to build a system that can figure out which time steps are important and how important they are. And we do this with a multi-channel adaptive attention mechanism. It is a minor modification to the system uh, proposed by Sarah et al. And for the uh, sake of simplicity, Let's imagine we only have two channels and t prime time frames. We split this representation into half and then the first channel we do not touch. And to the, to the second channel we apply a softmax with a learnable temperature parameter, which McPhee et al. calls uh, the autopool parameter. And after this softmax operation, we take the dot product of these two uh, vectors to obtain a single value. We can interpret this operation as taking a weighted average of the first vector and the weights of this weighted average are different for each time step, different for each channel and different for each song. To give you the full picture, we had uh, 512 channels and t prime time frames for each song. We split this representation into half. And to the second half, we apply channel-wise softmax operation with uh, a learnable temperature parameter. And after that, we take a channel-wise dot product of these two matrices to obtain 256 features per song. And after obtaining these features, we connect them to a linear layer and apply batch normalization. And why do we do this? First of all, we need to control the range of values that the embedding components can have. Uh, the reason for that is that we use a loss function, which is the triplet loss, and we need to specify a desired distance between the positive and the negative elements. And if the distances between the elements are in the magnitudes of uh, thousands, then a margin parameter of one or two would not make much sense. Another reason why we apply batch normalization is to make sure all the dimensions of our latent space are utilized similarly. In this figure, we can see the samples are clustered pretty well, but almost half of the embedding space is not used. And this is not something that we want. With applying batch normalization, we make sure that all the embedding components are centered around zero and have similar spreads meaning all the dimensions of our latent space are utilized similarly. And this is something that we want. And this concludes the network architecture parts of MOVE. Uh, we can see that we started with the Kramer pitch class profile features, and then the transposition invariance module, and then the convolutional layers to expand receptive field, the multi-channel adaptive attention mechanism, 
and the linear layer and the batch normalization to obtain our final embeddings. And now the training strategy. In our training set, we have nearly 84,000 songs in uh, nearly 14.5 thousand clicks or labels, and our validation set includes 14,000 songs in 3.5 thousand clicks. To obtain a network which is more robust to the changes in the musical dimensions, we apply data augmentation in the form of pitch transposition, uh, time stretching and time warping. And lastly, we use the triplet loss as our loss function and uh, to select which triplets that we are going to use, we uh, perform a hard positive and hard negative mining, meaning that for a given anchor, we select the positive sample that has the largest distance to the anchor and we select the negative sample which has the uh, smallest distance to the anchor. On top of that, we normalize our uh, squared Euclidean distance values with the size of the embeddings to be able to compare uh, different models with different embedding sizes on the same scale. And now the results. First of all, I will talk about our ablation studies. And all the performances we report here are the performances on our validation set. First, we want to select an embedding size for our model. And as you can see on the figure on the left, uh, we see a saturation after 16K. And that's why we chose 16K as our final embedding size. And uh, in the further ablation studies, we wanted to see the effect of using data augmentation, uh, having the transposition invariance module, uh, changing strategies for summarizing the temporal content, and uh, different strategies for triplet mining and uh, the results justify our design decisions. To compare the performance of our model with the previous models, we use two datasets. First, Datacos includes 15,000 songs, and second, YouTube Covers includes only 350 songs. The results on Datacos shows that we achieved a 12% relative increase compared to the best performing methods, and we would like to note that to obtain all the pairwise distances on Datacos with Slate Fusion model, we needed to wait a few weeks, while with Move, we only need a few minutes to compute all the pairwise distances. And the results on YouTube covers show that we achieve uh, state-of-the-art performance, but our model uh, with 4K embedding size and our model with 16K embeddings uh, perform the same. And we think that this might be due to uh, the small number of queries and references in the YouTube covers dataset, and we suspect that the, re the results reported on this dataset may not be significant. And now some useful links. Uh, we share all the code that we used for our experiments on our GitHub repo along with uh, pre-trained models. Uh, you can find our paper on archive and you can find the Datacos benchmark set on the given link. Thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions, you can contact me through email. Thank you.